First time done it this way. So this is new for me. Let's see what's going on in this corner. Meeting information. Recording. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Hey, folks. Good morning. Good afternoon or good evening, wherever you're at, in the U.S. or around the world. Welcome to Baseball Outside the Box. I'm your host, Pete Caliendo. This is the show that loves to interview baseball's best coaching minds who love to challenge the status quo, and they are from all over the world. Folks, first, before we start, do us a favor. Go to the audio is going to be on baseballoutsidethebox.com. Go to the audio part there to listen to it. Should be up by tomorrow. And the video on YouTube, Peter Caliendo. If you can subscribe to both, that really helps us get the show out. I want to thank all our audience. I do it all the time. We're, we have listeners in over 100 countries. So we are thrilled and excited that you're all joining us tonight here in Chicago. We're joining we're going to go all the way to my favorite country when it comes to baseball. I know a lot of people are going to get mad at me because I said my favorite, but I have other favorites too. But this is really an unbelievable one. Been there over 30 times. We're heading to Japan, Tokyo, Japan, to visit with Yoshi Akita. And listen, I'm going to, Yoshi's been around. He's been, a, a matter of fact, he came, he went all the way to high school in Japan. Then he went, came here to the States, went to the University of Iowa with the Hawkeyes, and got a strength and conditioning degree there obviously worked there then he got joined the res in the minor leagues as a strength and conditioning coach then he went back to japan and played well actually not played he was with the rakatoon eagles he was an interpreter strength coach and that's the big leagues folks and an international scout for 15 years so let's not waste any time because japanese baseball is amazing it's fantastic i'm not saying they're perfect but they're very good at what they do man and i love it and let's talk to yoshi welcome him. how you doing yoshi Good, very good. Thanks, Pete. Thanks for having me here. I believe what we're at uh, nine o'clock in the morning there in Tokyo, right? It's actually ten o'clock in the morning. I just uh, dropped off my kid and just came back home. So. Wow. Yeah. You well, <laughs> talk about time zones. It's like it's like I'm in the future. I think. Um, uh, I know- actually, we are in the future. Sorry about that. Oh, then you could tell me what the lotto numbers are going to be. Yeah, yeah it's Wednesday morning here, right. but uh, there's right. nothing I can tell you, I guess. But. <laughs> well, Yoshi, listen, I, I really appreciate it. I know, you, you know, you, you're you at home. You're going to be home for another month um, because of your family. You're with your newborn and everything. That's mm-hmm. understandable. Um, but we're yes. excited because, you know, we're all over on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, I talk about Japanese baseball all the time. Um, really? So let's do this. Let's okay. just talk about, you talk a little bit about when you grew up, started playing uh-huh. baseball in Japan, what mm-hmm. it was like for a young kid when you were playing baseball in Japan, kind of the like things you did, you know, the practice yeah. maybe and all that games. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm 39 years ago, not 39 years old. So when I was a kid, which is like, well, like 30, 35 years ago, you know, that at that time baseball was, I mean, it, it is still, but a baseball was actually bigger down you know right now everybody played the baseball so, you know you know when i was really little you know all, all, I, all the time played around you know just i found a space i found a um place to play baseball you know with a softball you know that's it was such a fun time you know decided to join the little league when i was eight or nine and then you know every weekend you know, practice or the game and all the parents came and then, you know, they cook, you know, lunch for us. You know, that was such a wonderful memory. But, uh, you know, like I said, as the time goes, you know, the space space was, you know, smaller and it's smaller. Oh, it's not, right now, it's not the best environment for the kids to play baseball, which needs a lot of uh, spaces, right? So it's, uh, I guess it's a different situation right now though. Well, yeah. And everybody, folks, if you haven't been to Japan, let me tell you, the mm-hmm. cleanest country in the world, the most organized country in the world. And they have to be because, you know, I'm just going off the top of my head, but it might be 120 million people in, in the size of half of California. So when you're in mm-hmm. that demographic, you know, you've got to be very organized. I want to go back to you're talking about when you're when you're a young kid playing. Um, okay. space, space is an issue now, obviously, because Japan's growing more and more. Mm-hmm. What was it like, the practices? Were they really intense? Were they relaxed at the time? How were the coaches? Kind of give us a background in that a little bit. 
Yeah, I'm sure that you know Japanese baseball already, right? So, <laughs> yeah, it's、uh, really strict. Actually, you know, the little league when I was when I belonged to was it's not a very good team. You know, that was really fun team. So it was all the relaxing and then you know just、uh, talking, all the jokes and then you know coaches were like my my dad or like my friends. You know, he was not like my boss or nothing like that. Maybe, but because that is why we were really bad team. We almost never won the game. <laughs> you know? But、uh, most of the good teams, you know, most of the、um, professional baseball players, when they were kids, they practice like really strict, like army. So that's you know, Japanese ball series. Yeah, and that's the key because you know one thing the Japanese do really well, and a lot of Asian countries do very well, and that's practice. Practice、mm-hmm. and practice. Now back.、Mm-hmm. Still, let's stay with the young kids. Still,、mm-hmm. did you play practice on weekends only? Play games on weekends only? What was the time that you did that?、Uh, when I was a kid, I practice.、Uh, you know, once on the weekday, and then you know every Saturday and then a Sunday. Sometimes practice, sometimes game, and I would say we play twenty to twenty to twenty five games a year. And then, other than that, all the practice. And the thing is, in Japan, you once you choose one sport, so you don't do anything else. So you know, like、uh, you know, you guys play、uh, football in the summer and then basketball in the winter and then maybe baseball in the spring. We don't do like that. Once you choose baseball, all time baseball.、So. See Yoshi, there is something I don't know about Japanese baseball.、Uh, good, I'm happy to tell you something new. Yes, I'm sure you're gonna tell me more. Um, you know, along with that, what what were the practices like? An example,、um, mm-hmm. you know, were there two three coaches?、Uh, was it a lot of drills? Was it game situation combination? What was it? A lot of drills, a lot of drills. Maybe nowadays things are changing. You know, I don't want to pretend pretend like that. I know everything about the Japanese baseball. So more like, please take it like、uh, it's about my personal opinion,、mm-hmm. personal experience. But.、Uh, Um, yeah, it's all about drill. It's all about a practice. Sometimes, you know, when you were a kid, you just trust the coach and you just follow it. You know, there was no YouTube, there's no new information. The coach or dad or like all the information, only the information you can trust, you know it. So, like sometimes you'll just apply catch for like almost like an hour. You know, just so、uh, I know, unless you have to, to keep throwing good to you know somebody else. You know, around right here. You know, around this zone, like a ten in a row. Otherwise, you have to start over. You know that kind of stuff. You know, just he does a lot of drills and practice and stuff. You know, folks. You know, if you didn't know, I'm sure you do because I mentioned a lot on the show. You know, we take a lot of teams to Japan, thirteen,、uh, fourteen, fifteen year old teams to play around. You know, Tokyo, Osaka. So we've seen a lot of teams, and what Yoshi's talking about when they play catch, it is incredible.、Um, when they take infield, outfield. You don't see many balls drop. You don't see many balls thrown away. They're very, very good at what they do. Yoshi, if you were to say why Japanese baseball is so good, what would you attribute that to? Why? You mean、What's、Japanese、it? baseball is very good? At, you mean professional or more like a everything? High school, professional. We're going to talk about high school in a minute, but overall,、mm-hmm. it's pretty good baseball. Why are Japanese players good?、Um, What are the reasons? I guess、uh, you know why they're good. You think? Ah,、uh, yeah. First of all, I don't know if they are really that good. I mean, once you see MLB, yeah, you see some Japanese baseball players, but not many. You know, if you think about how much population, you know, when they were kids to play baseball, that can be more. And then the thing is, um, you never, I never learned when I was a kid that ah.、Uh, Playing sports, playing baseball is a part of the fun. You know, let's have a fun. I've never heard it. Yeah. You know, it's really strict. So, I mean, when you're a kid, if you spend some certain time, of course you're gonna be better. You're gonna be developed. You know, no matter if you like baseball or not, because you work on it. <laughs> you know, no football, no basketball, just baseball. Yeah. You know, after two, three years. You know, when when you compare the、uh, you know one kid who focus on baseball only just the baseball, you know, a few years, another kid who plays multiple sports, you know, ten fifteen years later, you never know which one is gonna be better. But when you think about it, just only three years later, 
yeah, of course, the kid with, you know, just the baseball experience will be better. So th I think that's what it is. So. If I was to tell people the reason there's good Japanese players or teams, whether mm -hmm. it's high school, Little League, because look at Little League, they do really well. High school mm -hmm. championships are amazing. Um, mm -hmm. If I was to say the culture you grew up in, mm -hmm. the discipline, mm -hmm. the love for the game, mm -hmm. Would those be three things, and maybe there's more what that that explains Japanese baseball? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And then, yeah, that's actually also another thing. Really, I appreciate you know what I learned uh, you know about a baseball when I was a kid. I didn't become to be a very good baseball player, but uh, I feel like I have learned so much stuff from the baseball, like a discipline. That's really the big thing, you know. But what you needed to be as a person before you become, before you are a baseball player, that kind of stuff, you know, so. What, what would you say about the respect they have for the game, for the equipment, mm -hmm. for the umpires, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's the fans or the players, they all have respect mm -hmm. for their themselves. Um, right, and also the baseball field, a mound, a dugout, everything, you know, you you think they're kind of sacred place, you know, so I wouldn't, I'm not really saying things are good or bad, okay? Just I'm saying it's different, okay? So in Japan, you never spit on the ground. I wouldn't say never, but uh, at least when you're a kid, you, ne you never spit on the ground. You don't chew the gum during the game. Um, I don't know. And then you don't really talk bad to other players, you know, more like kind of respect each other. And you needed to, maybe you really think it's kind of weird about a win after the game or like after the practice, when you go home, when you leave the field, you bow, you know, you take off your hat, you bow to the ground that I thank you very much for, you know, having us practice on the field, you know, using the field, that kind of stuff, you know. So those are, oh. you know, one of those little things I have learned. So. Yeah. And those are, see, for, for us in the U.S., those are big things because, you know, we have players at, at different levels, not a lot, but, you know, they're going to throw their helmet. Sometimes they swear that, you know, they don't take care of the field. You know, mm -hmm. and we're trying to always educate, you know, coaches, mm -hmm. players, and parents, you know, mm -hmm. respect the umpire, respect the field, respect your opponents. Um, mm -hmm. Now, let's jump because talk about respect. We're going to jump to high school baseball. Sure. And the reason being, because I tell everybody, I've been to Koshian before, but I tell everybody, you know, Japanese baseball is incredible also and why. And um, so talk about your time, what, what it was like being a high school Japanese player do they have freshmen, sophomore, juniors, varsity? How do you play on team on the team? How do you make the team? All the different rules because it's a little okay. different. Yeah. Okay. First of all, in Japan, high school are three years. So, like, uh, you know, when you, it's not about a baseball, it's more like a, a, a academy. But are you um, belong to elementary school for six years, junior high school three years, and high school three years. So when you talk about a high school baseball, just know three years and full or uh, in the american uh, academy uh, class it's like a from sophomore to senior right? right those are three years and then you don't really have your own team in the you know junior team or like a sophomore team nothing like that there's just only one team you know just only one like i haven't said big league but how do you say like one top team and that's about it in the u.s to be like a senior team uh -huh, okay senior team and that's about it so um when I when I was freshman or like a sophomore, like a first year in the high school, you don't really do anything. Like <laughs> you just see the baseball. You see the. I mean, you know, one was maybe a, a few players from the same level, same grades. You know, they are really good, so they join the senior team and they practice in the game and all together. But uh, I was not one of them, so uh, I was just watching the uh, guys practice, play the game, and cheer. And then the thing is. The thing is, I never thought that uh, why I don't have a chance to practice or why don't I like just, uh, you know, be outside of field. I never thought of that. I thought yeah. it, it's just normal. It's just, it is what it is. I never doubt it. But you ha have to doubt it to be better. Because, of course, you know, if you just watch baseball and if you become better, yeah. That's good, but it's not gonna happen. You know, you have to do something. But I have never done anything. 
without yeah. just watching the game and cheering the senior team. <laughs> so that's why I didn't really become the big baseball player, good so, baseball player, I guess. So, so basically, if you're a sophomore and junior, mm-hmm. you, unless you're really good, you don't go up to senior and play. No. You, you don't even practice? You do. You play catch, maybe all together. But sometimes right before the really uh, important conference, you know, com- important games, you really don't. After you play catch, you're done. You just uh, help, you know, you just pick up the balls and then, you know, maybe sometimes throw the BP and that's about it. If now, if we did that in the U.S., we'd only have one team. The rest of the kids mm-hmm. would quit and go do something else. That's the difference. In Japan, mm-hmm. they have so much respect for the game and honor for the game that they're willing to wait to hope mm-hmm. that they can make the senior team. What mm-hmm. when, you, when you make the senior team, um, you then get your number? I believe, mm-hmm. or right? How does yep. that? Yeah, it kind of depends on the place, but uh, yeah, usually between 15 to 20 number, 20 people will be chosen, you know, for the, you know, every competition. So, uh, you know, single digits is the everyday player, and then, you know, couple. So I have never got a single digits on my back, <laughs> which means I haven't ever played every day, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, that's what it is. I was a, a catcher. I was a bullpen, like a backup catcher. It's a better way to say that bullpen catcher. So I, I had a number 12 on my back. So. But, you know, you think about it, like you said, okay, so you, maybe you didn't play at certain levels, but you mm-hmm. know what? Strength coach, you know, international scout, you're with a big league team in Japan. Um, you were in the minors with the Reds. I mean, that's pretty good accomplishment in my, in my books. Um, Thank you. Your high school player, uh, I want to see if it's changed because I know you, mm-hmm. you watch the major league coaches work with players, but mm-hmm. when usually I remember when you told, I remember doing a class in Japan, when you told coaches, this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. Then you say any questions and they don't ask questions because no. if, if the coach says, this is how you do it, this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. Is that still the same in Japan? Right now? I think it's more different. Um, students or players they started to have rights to talk back to coaches right now <laughs> but uh when i was a kid when i was a high school now do do the players do the coaches you know here in the states the coaches now are starting more and more to ask player questions instead of always mm-hmm. telling them they mm-hmm. ask questions how how it feels what do you think things like mm-hmm. that a little bit of, probably happening a little bit in japan no yeah yeah that's true. Not only the kids level, but also the professional level. That's, yeah, that's, it's changing right now. Yeah, the other you know, thing, thing, go ahead. Go I'm go sure ahead. you're, you know, I'm sure that you're the one of those who is helping, you know, those coaching and stuff. The thing is a lot of information, you know, even like you don't really have to listen to your own coach. You know, you can get any kind of information out of the world everywhere. You know, that's really, you know, really good. A good stream, I guess, so. I want you to tell the folks um, what Koshian, and I, you know, I, I give a general description when I say, you mm-hmm. know, exactly. But I, I say, okay, look, it's single elimination. There's 46 teams. It's two weeks, mm-hmm. four games a day. You know, it's, it's a, it's 120 degrees. It's really hot. One <laughs> field at Koshian, major league field, and then only one champion. Um, and, and it's almost, you know, I mean, kids are crying when and when they don't win. They collect mm-hmm. the dirt. Talk about the experience. Of, I mean, maybe you didn't play in Koshan, but you know about Koshan really well. Tell the right. people about that. Yeah, it's uh, there are so many perspectives to talk about the Koshan. So just to really take it, just one. Pro- yeah, I will say just, there are two pros- big two perspectives. I mean, most of the best for kids in Japan. I mean, they want to play at a coaching even more than they want to become a professional baseball player. <laughs> That's really how big it's maybe a little bit close to, I would say, college basketball, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of similar, but I, I guess it's even bigger. So, really, it didn't really, like you said, it didn't really become that, it didn't really uh, come true. But uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I really wanted to play. In Koshin for the high school tournament, that was really my big dream. So, dream is sounds good, sounds beautiful, sounds 
like there are a lot of、uh, good stories, but at the same time, you may do too much to be in the dream. Does it make sense for you? Yes. Like yes. sometimes you don't really think about like your classes, grades, or sometimes even friendship or family time. Yeah. You would contribute everything to be to play in the cushion. So, some tragedy that、uh, you know, one pitcher throw too much balls. There's、uh, in the states even like when from the little league level, there are many pitch counts, right? There is a pitch count, right? But uh, uh, in Japan, there is no pitch count. So once coach tell the pitcher to pitch in the game, complete the game, throw nine innings. That's what it is. So, I'm sure you have heard, but、uh, yeah, there are so many pitchers who threw too much in high school. They became really famous when they were in high school. They、uh, got drafted. They started to apply for Pro Bowl, but、uh, they don't didn't really play good. That's what happens sometimes. So, you know, and there has to be a lot of pressure. You know,、mm -hmm. school, you know what what are the parents like in Japan when it comes to high school baseball? Do they put pressure on the kids, or is it just depend on the family? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it totally depends on the family, and it's things are changing right now. But uh, uh, some some parents are really giving a lot of a lot of pleasures on their you know their kids. So, and then、uh, you know all the tournament games are on TV every every day. You know, usually you play four games a day, so that's the first game starting at nine o'clock in the morning. So I wouldn't say everybody, but so many people are watching the games from nine o'clock in the morning till, you know, well four or five p.m. And then that's really, I would say, really crazy time.、Yeah. So it's、uh, like I said.、Uh, so one from the one perspective, you would say sometimes like yeah, that's too much baseball. Like sounds like dream is too much. And I mean, you know, sometimes that hurts the baseball players. But at、uh, the other perspective, it's There is a goal for a baseball player, you know. Since if you don't have a goal, you don't really work hard. You don't. You can't. You don't really know what to do. But you know, they know what to do because they have a big goal, big dream to be a player at a coaching. So, you know, it, all the time there's an argument between those two perspectives in Japan. Yeah,、so. and folks, think about that national television, high school baseball. Then you got to、mm -hmm. imagine the final. Imagine the final game. Everybody in Japan watching that game. You know,、uh, it's the biggest game in in Japan right now. You know, Yoshi, as a strength and conditioning coach, I wanted to ask you about this. What, are there some unique things that you guys do in Japan that maybe we don't do here in the U.S. with your Japanese players、um, when it comes to strength and conditioning or anything like that? Um. You know, it's the strength and conditioning and the coaching. There is no right answer, right? There is like no、uh, perfect way to to work out or to practice or to coach. So there's no、um, perfect answer. So it's kind of hard to say. But、um, I would say, in general, just I'm talking about in general, Japanese strength and conditioning can be a little bit behind down、um, in the states.、Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the reason why I went to the states for college to to get a degree out there. But、uh, so maybe that's why I, I wanna believe so, you know. But、uh, um, when、uh, when I started to、uh, work in Japan after I spent one year, you know, in the minor league as a strength coach, I kind of get shocked because you know there's almost no weight lifting. I mean, there was a weight room, there was really small weight room, but、uh, nobody was using it. Like since players that are gonna practice too much and then like they round too much, so they don't have any guts left after the practice. They don't have nothing left. So you know, no energy, and they're so hungry and tired and everything. So that was that time. It was big difference. But things are changing right now, though. What what year would you say they started getting into more weightlifting? What year was that roughly? Roughly, I mean, I mean, years, yeah. When I started to work, actually, ten to fifteen years ago, yeah, they got in, started getting into more weightlifting. Yeah, no, because people started to think that throwing harder is better than just the throwing at the right 
spot. I mean, okay. I mean, throwing the right spot is really important too. But you need to throw harder too. Also for the heater, you need to hit. You know, you need to hit deep. So. Yeah, and and just to, I want to make it clear for our audience that's not been to Japan or seen Japanese practices, folks. Uh, we're not talking about regular practices here, okay? The Japanese really practice. When they put time in, they practice hard. Um, and Yoshi, you could attest to that, right? I mean, you just said j- practice is not easy. Now I can't go mm-hmm. lift because I'm so tired just from the practice. Right? Japanese mm-hmm. practice, when it comes to practice, it's a, it's it's grueling. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I started to feel like I'm kind of talking bad thing about a Japanese baseball, but <laughs> so hopefully like, you know, I love Japanese baseball and I hope like I would say something more positive, but uh, yeah, 10 to 15 years ago when I started to work, I was shocked because uh, kids, players started to, you know, work out from like nine o'clock, 9.30 in the morning, you know, two, three hours in the morning, pick up sandwich, rice bowl for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, really quick lunch. It was really 30 minutes. So that's about it. And after that, I started to practice again up to 3, 4 p.m., sometimes you know, 5, 6 p.m. So that's like whole day. And then wow. after eating dinner in the hotel, you just, you know, swing the bed after the dinner or something. I was like, <laughs> that's, uh, wow. I mean, if you're a high school baseball player, then if that, if that is something you want to do, that's good. But that was a pro bowl, you know, I was like, wow. Yeah, that's so. why I've got some friends who play in Japan, even in the 70s and 80s, and they said their the practices in spring training were incredible, and they, it was so hard for them. They were not used to that type of training. It, it's difficult to take an American player and put him in the spring training in Japan without preparing him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's so difficult. Your spring training, uh, you guys have had in the last two, three years, um, Is that, what is that, a couple months? Yeah, it's uh, every team starts uh, spring training. It has actually started already for this year from the 1st of February. And usually the opening game is the end of uh, March. So, yeah, it's close to two months. So your responsibility when you were the strength and conditioning coach with the team, what was spring training like for you? What did you have to do? Um, was like, uh, so like I said, uh, 1st of February, that's when the spring training started. And then inter squad game starts around the 10th or like 12th of February. And then, um, from the end of uh, February, it's going to be kind of real games against the opponent team, you know? So, uh, first uh, a week or first uh, one, you know, 10 days are really important, uh, time, important period for us to have them ready. So, you know, during the off season, you know, even they like a workout, they don't really do nothing kind of close to the game. So uh, game preparation, that was the biggest responsibility when I was strong coach. So. Before the season, do you have a program for them that they go mm-hmm. into a strength and conditioning program? Yes. Yes. So, uh, of course, it depends on, you know, how old you are, you know, how, uh, how much uh, uh, career you have or like, uh, you know, Japanese player, foreign player, it's all different. So try to individualize, you know, as much as possible. But uh, yeah, off-season program, you know, spring training program during the se- in-season program, it's all different. But that's kind of something that you can imagine from the American baseball, American strength and conditioning. So. Yeah. Um, now, Japan very big flexibility. The Japanese are mm-hmm. always stretching. Uh, mm-hmm. So talk about why, what's the importance of stretching so much and can you stretch mm-hmm. too much? Um, yeah, I don't know if you ever heard, but sometimes stretching too much will lose your uh, speed, will lose your power. So uh, I wouldn't say, um, you know, being flexible as much as possible is a good thing, but like kind of, it's kind of one of the cultural thing. Once you are, you know, once you start to play baseball, you know, coaches all the time tell you, hey, you know, stretch yourself all the time. You know, after you take a shower, after you take a bath, stretch yourself. And that's kind of common thing to say. So everybody, every little kid, they do stretch. I think that's what it is. You think, you know, stretching is really good thing. So compared to the uh, kids in, in the States, so. All right. Why would you say when you look at young Japanese players, um, the Japanese pitchers have incredible control? Mm-hmm. What's the what are some of the reasons maybe Japanese pitchers have good control? That's good, Christian. It's gonna. Uh, I think you know 
Yeah. So, Pete, who, who is your, who was your uh, favorite uh, pitcher when you were a kid? American? American. Well, my, one of my, the best ones I like is Greg Maddox. Okay. The, what was the reason why you liked Maddox? Because he threw strikes a lot. He could move the uh -huh. ball in and out, up and down, change speeds. Okay. Um, you know, and that's why I liked him. Cause I, I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to see, he, 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 he didn't walk many people. Uh huh. So, and then you wanted to be like him, right? Yeah. So you think uh, control is more important than speed because Maddox was like that, right? At that time, yes. Obviously, with science and technology and some of the things that are changing, you can see you need velocity, obviously. Right, right. Um, but at the same time, control, when you know how to control the ball in and out, up and down, that automatically changes speeds also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it just depends on the pitcher, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, that is what it is. In Japan, you know, all the media talk about like a good pitcher is a you know, pitcher with a good control. And then you want to, when you're a kid, you want to become like him. Ah. So what did you work on? You know, maybe you want to throw, you know, more strike. Then you just throw harder. I think that's what it is. You know, Ichiro is such a, I'm sure everybody knows him. And in Japan, it's, he's really big superstar. If you want to become like Ichiro, you know, you want to run fast. You want to have really good contacts, you know, you know, good contacts. Then, I'm not saying good or bad, okay? you know, is more important than home run. So that is, you know, that's how it works, I think, so. Yeah, speak about each real boy. He could run, he can yeah. throw, he can hit, yeah. he can the power yeah. if he wants. Yeah. Um, he could pretty much do it all. Uh, so know, right now, you know, you, Dervish, he can be the, maybe the, you know, the, I wouldn't say number one, but he has a lot, really good influence on the um, Japanese baseball right now because he's such a really good one and he's throwing really hard and he has been working out really good. So, and the kids are watching him right now. So, you know, those kind of things are changing the mainstream of uh, uh, baseball, I, I assume. Since technology and, 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 you know, TV, I mean, we're talking about mm -hmm. everything has changed the game in a lot of ways. The Japanese mm -hmm. pitchers now, when when you were in professional baseball, were they working mm -hmm. on trying to throw hard? And mm -hmm. what were they doing to try to throw hard? Is there, what was their, their uh, training? When I was a kid, everybody said, if you want to throw harder, you need to run. Ah. <laughs> but, which, does, which doesn't really make sense, though. Why if you, I mean, running is, when when I talk about running, that's more like an endurance running. It's like long distance running, you know? So, I mean, speed, power, endurance, and then, you know, when you think of a fast twitch muscle, slow twitch, twitch muscle, once you learn strength and conditioning, it's really simple. It's really easy to know no matter how much you can run, it doesn't really deliver to be a pitcher to throw faster, you know? But uh, that's how you are how you learn like 10, 20 years ago. But uh, things are changing now though. But now, yeah, now, or like you said, all the technology came in and then, you know, people started to have more knowledge and then, you know, certain pitchers experience that can be shared with, you know, so many people. So things are changing now. Uh, so people started to work out even more and then, you know, try to figure out what, you know, so trackman and then uh, what, what else? Um, right. So people talk about, yeah, lab sold and then, you know, it's really easy, easier access right now to own those. So, um, you know, you know what a spin rate is, you know, the axis of the ball right now. So things are better now. Matter of fact, I saw um, when I was in Japan, I saw a baseball that the Japanese invented, which they mm -hmm. throw, and that measures everything, Fat, you know, velocity, mm -hmm. spin rate, measures everything mm -hmm. when they throw the ball. Um, mm -hmm. So technology is starting to grow. You know, baseball in the U.S. and in Japan has always been traditional. Change came very slow. In Japan, it comes mm -hmm. very, very slow. But mm -hmm. in the U.S., it came slow. We're starting to change more and more, but it used to be Faster, very yeah. change. One of the things you see in Japan all the time. Um, now it's not the most important thing, but the stands mm -hmm. in Japan, everybody has the same stands. Mm -hmm. uh, is that because what you said it, they followed somebody? Was it Sarahara Ho? Who was it? <laughs> that, that stands um, and everybody, everybody uses it. 
So the thing is just uh, even you want to change your stance or the, your mechanics, the coach never allow you to do that. Once coach believe like one like a thing, so all the students, all the players are going to be kind of identical, you know, because that's what a coach wants. But again, you know, more information right now, things are changing. So I expect maybe five, 10 years from now on, you know, more variety of senses and mechanics will be seen on TV. Though. Folks, um, I'm going to mention this because I saw it in an article also and asked a lot of people, uh, why am I impressed with Japanese baseball? I'll tell you why. Because in the U.S., and we have great baseball, Yoshi. We have, you've been to college, you're university, you know, University of Iowa, you saw the baseball program there. Many great colleges, many great high schools, we have a lot of good travel teams, you know, so we have some not so good, but we have a lot of good travel teams and we have, you know, professional baseball, but we also have 26 million amateur players in the U S okay. Mm -hmm. Now Japan in baseball is about 1.1 1. 1 million to about 1.4 million approximately players in Japan, mm -hmm. big difference in numbers. But if you watch the Japanese compete worldwide now, okay, maybe they're maybe they're they're not at the major league level yet as a team, but there's mm -hmm. players that can play here. But you watch all the international competitions, Little League World Series, 12U, 15U, 18U, World Baseball Classic, Japan is always at the top. Okay. So that they're doing something right. But what I say on the show all the time. As the Japanese get more technology and get more knowledge from the U.S., look out. Because if you think that they're throwing hard now, when they start throwing even harder with their control, talk about dominating pitching that they're going to have. I think you're going to see more and more. So I think there's a br even a brighter future for Japanese baseball it's, you know, as an outsider. I, that's what I see. That's uh, thank you for the compliments. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thanks for the uh, encouragement. I like that. And then actually, I have thought about it before, but uh, you kind of reminded me of thinking like that. So I like that. But uh, um, I mean, I'm sure it's not only the Japan, but uh, in the in the states too. Um, but again, like I uh, we talked really earlier in the interview that. Uh, Less students, less kids, less number of the kids are playing baseball right now. Yeah, what, then, what, that's a good point, okay? Because I asked this in Cuba, um, this question also, they were reducing in Cuba, a lot of kids stopped playing baseball mm -hmm. um, and went to soccer. Um, mm -hmm. Why in Japan, why less kids playing baseball? Why do you think? Is it the pressure? I mean, no. Nah. I mean, that can be one, but uh, I would say there are a few reasons. Uh, one of which will be, like I said, less space compared to soccer or the basketball. You need more space and you need a basketball and you need more number of the people. So that is, uh, I'm sure, one of the reasons. And then before, in Japan, there is only sometimes just, just baseball was there. And baseball can be the only sports you can watch on TV. But right now you can watch multiple sports. And then, you know, mm -hmm. when you talk about a soccer, there are many uh, uh, professional soccer players playing, not only in Japan, but also on the outside of Japan. And they're really playing good, playing really, uh, you know, world uh, top lo level. So you want to become, you, if you're a kid, you want to become like those kind of guys. So, you know, th there are more choices. That's maybe the best way to say. Oh, well, good point. So, good point. And kids, yeah. you know, kids are kids. You know, they're gonna may they see something they like, they might want to do something else. Um, it's no different and in the U.S. Also, we have so many sports. Kids have more options here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we think is very important here in the states mm -hmm. is that is at the young levels, it's important to have very good coaching because we also have moms and dads who coach at the young levels, just mm -hmm. like right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we have parents and it's important that the parents are educated. Um, let, I want to jump to major league baseball. Okay. And we'll okay. finish with major league baseball there. Cause it's another amazing level. Um, 
you know, just mention to the fa- to the people listening about Major League Baseball competition. When you go to a Major League Baseball game in Japan, what does that look like? Um, look like? What do you mean? Like, uh, what's the stadium look like? What's the during the I game? Mean, what are the fans doing during the game? Oh, um, uh, okay. Are their phones? Are they you know watching the ball game? What, what what's what's going on? Yeah, uh, currently you know because of COVID. I mean, changing everything, but I'm just talking about it before COVID. I mean, when you go to the baseball, Japanese uh, baseball field, that's like a um, Japanese big karaoke box. You know, people are, everybody singing that at every heater, not every heater, but, uh, you know, everyday uh, heater, everyday player, usually they have their own song. So uh, all the fans know what song needed to be sung for each player. So everybody sing together. You know, once your um, favorite favorite team score, everybody was like really wow. You know, all the cheers, all the um, you know shout and yell, and it's so crazy. And then you know people were kind of sharing all the pleasure and the fun all together. So it's really a fun place to go. Right. So it's really more noisy than the uh, more noisy than the American baseball, I would say. Yeah, and the fans are cheering for their team. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. I haven't heard Japanese people boo at all. I don't think they boo at games or anything like that. Nah, not really boo. We don't really have that kind of culture. Not only about a baseball, just I'm talking like in general. We don't really have the culture to say boo. So right, right. that's good. Yeah. Keep keep the culture. That's important. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now you're around batting practice. Um, what's what's Japanese batting practice before a game look like? Uh, okay. Um, first of all. Um, all each professional baseball team has uh, its own professional batting pitcher in the states. Uh, people who throw are their coaches, so sometimes we're well, 60 some years old, really old coach. Right. And I mean, I'm not saying too bad, you know, uh, just throw just a you know, the nice and easy ball, but it never happened in Japan. Um, usually they used to be professional baseball pitchers once they retire, club ask them to be a, a staff to be a, a batting a uh, pitcher so mm-hmm. their job is to throw ball to hitter during the practice that's their job i mean they do uh, sometimes like something else too but their main jobs are just throwing the baseball to the hitter and no like trying to throw the strike i mean not trying to get a swing and a miss or not like trying to uh get out more like have a hitter hit that's yeah. their job you know it's so such a big change when from uh, when they were a player though but anyway um so uh, even before the game uh practice more like in- intense and then uh more like a i don't know kind of people more like kind of focus on it so and yeah. it usually people practice with the uh, two cages yeah so there are like, kind of two budding pitchers out there so one pitcher throw and then you know hit a hit, and then another in another cage, another uh, the the other uh, batting pitcher throw. That's how it works. Yeah, and you see they they sometimes have a station where they're bunning, another station uh-huh. where they do soft toss or uh-huh. drill and uh, unique drills too. That they're, they're, yeah. they're always always working, always. Yeah, always something's going on. So really, you need to be uh, careful if you are just shagging the outside. Sometimes ball comes from this way and that way, and the outfield coach or the hitting fan goes. So once you, I once like when I uh, started to work for the you know Japanese baseball team, really I didn't really want to be on the field during the game because <laughs> really I was scared. You never know really where the ball came. So. All right, Yoshi. Um- and you may know this, I don't know, but I'm going to ask the question. Okay. Um, in Japan, you know, players are going to make mistakes. They're going to fail. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's mm-hmm. a game where you fail. Um, it mm-hmm. just, but you don't see them get mad, at least not out in front on the field. They always keep their, their cool, their composure. Um, why is that? Is, uh, do they mentally train to do that? Do you, do you have an mm-hmm. idea about that? Uh, is maybe the culture again? Um, yeah. And once I say culture, that's kind of too easy for me to say. And yeah, <laughs> that's like, brought. I feel like. A... <laughs> but, but, but are they, are they not allowed to get mad? Like, you know, like. Yeah, maybe... 
you kind of no. same thing. You kind of same thing. You know, since when you were little, you know, you are not really uh, allowed to, uh, you know, talk bad, or you not, you are not really allowed to spit or drink. I'm kind of same thing. You know, makes sense. Because yeah, you, once you do bad, that's your fault. That's nobody's fault. And then yeah, you can sometimes you can see that you know you show the emotion. Of course, when you get uh, hit by pigeons, that's a different story. But uh. When you don't do good, if you express emotion, if you're already mad and if you kind of throw the helmet, that looks like it doesn't look cool, right? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, and then you don't want to, you don't want to be look like that, you don't want to act like that because sometimes people think that's you're showing your weak mindedness comes. Yeah. If you have like a you know weak mindedness, you know you'd act like that. Yeah. Does it make sense? Absolutely, it makes a hundred percent sense. And what yeah. I love about it, and remember, I agree with you. The Japanese are not perfect. I remember early on, sometimes with young kids, they would put a little bit too much pressure on young kids. But the the good thing, everything we just spoke about, they start when they're young, because mm -hmm. if if you're not disciplined when you're young, if you're not able to mentally deal with failure when you're young, you're not going to do it when you're older. It's going to take you longer. Right. That's what I love about the Japanese. Um, right. Uh, he, as a scout, this is where we're going to finish the show with the scouting okay. part. Um, at the major league level, give an idea for an American player or Cuban or whoever, but, but I know mostly Americans you scout. What type of player can play in Japan? Because everybody wants to play in Japan, right? If, if they can't play in the U.S., but not everybody right. can play in Japan. Well, so what type of player can play there? Okay. Uh, okay. First of all, let's talk about a hitter, right? Uh, yeah. When you compete at American, you know, baseball and a Japanese baseball, the biggest difference in the hitter hitters wise is the power. Um, you know, in general, our bodies are smaller, and then you know, swing speed is slower. So usually, what we look for for the foreign hitters is the power. So we don't really care about uh, they run fast or like, uh, you know, they can defensively, they are really good. Of course, if they can run faster and defensively better, it's good, but uh, they're not really expected that much. So usually what uh, Japanese baseball look for like DH or first base kind of power hitter type, you know, uh, those kind of player are most of the hitters you can see from the States or from the foreign countries. Well, pictures. When you talk about a pitcher, also power, uh, you don't really see many pitchers throw a lot of, uh, um, uh, like uh, once you throw, like you, you know, when you see the MLB, you know, almost everybody throws a 95 at least, right? Or right. like if you see set up right close to 98, 99, but you don't see that, you know? Otani is not a uh, basic, basic Japanese baseball player. He is right. special. I mean, that's why he is good in the States too. So uh, nobody... Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, he's big too. Yeah. So once you throw a 95, it's really, really fast. I would, I think a average speed, the difference between the American pitcher and the Japanese baseball will be, I think a three, four miles difference, you know? So mm -hmm. if you were starter and if you average, so if you throw like a 90 for the starter, that's a little bit faster than usual, I guess, you know, which, which is I'm sure slower in the States, you know? So if you throw a hotter, you know, that's a really big compliment here. And also, uh, most of the Japanese pitchers, they throw, when they throw a uh, fastball, they're four-seam fastball. You don't see many two-seam fastball because, again, also when you're a kid, uh, you're tall, like, all right, when you throw a ball, you know, the, you needed to have a good spin rate and then you, the ball comes up like that. And then if you the ball moves a lot, hey, no, that's not a pitch. That's not the way you want to throw, you know. So it's uh, totally different. But so now once you bring major leagues, they're throwing now. They're changing, right? They're throwing two seam fastball in the major leagues. In yeah, Japan? a little bit different. Yeah, a little bit different right now. Yeah, before they were throwing only four seam, but now they're also mm -hmm. throwing two seam. Throw two seam, but uh, even though you don't throw that very good at two seam, that works better in Japan, I would say. Yeah. Kind of same thing, you know, if, if you think about it in the States, maybe if you have a full scene type fastball, like a high full scene, that works good in the States right now, right? Because not many pitchers throw a lot of the full scene compared to Japanese. So you want to throw something different. You want to throw something you have never seen for hitter, right? So once you, many uh, um, foreign 
pitchers when they do success they have really good two seam sometimes that those you know two seam can be just average in the states states but uh, they are really good in japan so yeah yoshi Makes last sense. question um okay if uh player comes to and i'm assuming uh, i should say most of the players that play in japan either come from triple a or the major leagues normally right mm -hmm. yeah okay um so my question is when a player comes to Japan nowadays, mm -hmm. what do they need to prepare for that's different? You know, because they mm -hmm. may not be used to it. Nowadays, uh, I want to talk about on the field and on the off the field, yeah. the both ways, right? Perfect. So on the field, um, I would say, so spring training is such an important time because even though like now you have access to watch Japanese baseball and then you can see a little bit, you can learn something even before they come to Japan, but uh, still there are so many differences. So you have to come to Japan and experience the spring training. If you're a pitcher, throw a lot of innings, not a lot of it, but throw some innings. And if you hit a, you know, get a, some at bats, then you will see the difference. And then you wanna uh, get adjusted, you know? So, um, Experiencing spring training, that's really, really big factor to be success. Yeah, and prepare them for what spring training yeah. is like. Yeah, yeah. Or well, like, a, yeah, you don't have to be prepared 100% during the spring training, but uh, at least at some level. So you still may uh, struggle a little bit in the beginning of the season, but as the time goes, they needed to be better. They needed to be adjusted, so... In Japan, one day in spring training could be all day. But uh, sometimes a foreign player, they don't have to practice. They don't have to work out. It kind of depends on the team. It depends on the manager, GM. But uh, at least Rackton Eagles, we never do the uh, same program for the foreign players Not to sure. the Jap with the same, same thing with the Japanese players. So, What about uh, – you've seen Mr. Baseball, the movie? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I've seen it maybe five times. I love it. <laughs> it How – how realistic is the movie? Okay. Um, so you said you watched that movie for five times, right? Five times, easily, yeah. <laughs> so that, um, do you know who is the model for that uh, main character? Uh, uh, okay, that was uh, Mr. Hoshino. Do you know about him? You know, sure. Yeah, I didn't know. Okay. Oh, I didn't know it was Mr. Hoshino. Yeah, yes, it was Mr. Hoshino. And then he was manager for Rakuten Eagles from yeah. uh, 2011 to 2014. And in those four years, I was big league strength coach. Ah. So, so uh, uh, part of it is real. I yeah. would say everything is real, but a part of it is real. And then that's actually a good point. Usually I tell foreign players that, that uh, hey, before you come to Japan, watch Mr. Baseball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then you can learn something, you know. Before we take a team to the U.S., young kids, we have them watch uh -huh. Mr. Mr. Oshino, <laughs> Real. Oshino san, did he speak English? He yeah. Speak English? Yeah, he had, at least he can communicate with people, yeah. Yeah, because remember, in the movie, he pretend he did not speak uh -huh. English. Right. He, uh, he did sometimes when he was with the Eagles, too. You know, I'm sure he understood what a foreign player said but sometimes he acted like he didn't know yes. because that's kind of yeah. part of it is he was respecting a player he didn't want to misunderstood he didn't want to misunderstand what a uh, player said and also he want he was a treating interpreter because almost the, each foreign player has its own interpreter you know yes. so try to respect everybody that's why sometimes he pretended he didn't understand very interesting love to hear that um you know, and you mentioned also because you wanted to say off the field for a player. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, off the field. Yeah, like I said, uh, there are so many difference. So uh, I didn't I usually don't want to hear that when a foreign player can come, come to Japan, they said it's weird or it's strange <laughs> or something like that. I wanted them to say it's different, you know, because it is what it is. Yep. No matter what they think it is Japanese baseball so you have to take it you know so you needed to be flexible you needed to uh have an attitude to learn something to something new yeah. to be success to success in Japan I would say 
And then almost every foreign player who does success here, they have really good communication skill. They build a good relationship with the place of play, Japanese players, coaches, staff, interpreter, and everybody. That's fantastic. And by the way, when you mentioned the four seam fastball, a, a memory came back. I was with uh, Emoto san, who was a former big league picture yes. governor, yes. Of one of the regions. We were on the same coaching staff. We took a team from Japan, an all star team, 28 year old, 25s, um, to spring training with the White Sox. And one day, uh, Emoto san and Oya san, Oya managed also. Mm-hmm. He was one of the coaches and they left, had to go somewhere. So I ran practice and practice was very easy because you just tell the Japanese players, you do this, you do this, you do this, and they just do it. And, you know, you, it's very, it's very, very um, comforting because they, they really listen. But the interesting part, I, I asked a pitcher that was doing work, young pitcher, 21 years old. I said, you throw four seam fastball. He said, yes. Um, I go, what about two seam fastball? He said, no, we cannot throw two seam fastball. Like you told me, you know? Uh, so I show him the grip of the two seam. He was walking the field, you know, doing exercise. He always had that in his hand, the ball. Hmm. It's almost like he did not want to forget that grip. Mm-hmm because he was not allowed to throw it yet because he did I not, see. because he didn't have good control. Um, mm-hmm. I think that was, that's when you said that, that reminded me of that story. I see. Yeah. That's kind of typical story. I hear that, which is kind of <laughs> sad story. If you ha- don't have good location, actually you needed to have two seamer, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah. But uh, again, like I feel like I kind of talk about all the, bad thing about a Japanese baseball today oh, but tell that's us, a way tell, <laughs> tell, so, tell us last thing I, <laughs> what you think why Japanese baseball is good now I mean I, so really I wanted to say I love Japanese baseball and then really baseball is something you know which brought me to over here I have such a happy life and because of the baseball you know I have learned so many uh, things through the baseball I have so many friends that throw the baseball, you know, those uh, guys who play together with me in little league high school, we you know we still, you know, you know, sometimes get together and talk and they're such a good friends. And then, um, yeah, I believe that Japanese baseball is not only just that uh, uh, you can uh, learn, you can to be a bit good baseball player, but also as a human being, as a person, you know, just uh, you wanna act better, you wanna be a better person you know, through the Bay Japanese baseball, I believe so. So uh, um, right now with the COVID, it's pretty hard to come to Japan. Pete, I'm sure for you, you never know when you're gonna come to Japan next time. But uh, even though you're not a baseball fan, once you have a chance to come to Japan, I really want you to, uh, you know, have a step into the uh, Japanese baseball field. Doesn't have to be Pro Bowl, college, high school, Little League, doesn't matter. And then to see what the players do. And then, Absolutely. yeah, that's what I hope so. Yoshi, thank you, man. And I can't, hopefully uh, I be, get a chance to come there soon. I love coming there. Um, I want to thank you and uh, hope that you will be back in professional baseball in Japan very soon. Yeah, I will be. And then, uh, yeah, Pete, I like, again, it's thank you really for having me here. Um, haven't spoken English for a while, so I hope that you understand what I say. But uh, hope someday that I uh, will get you really physically meet you so perfect yoshi you did a great job hang tight i'm gonna close the show don't go any um you know you did a fantastic job i understood everything you said so i'm sure our audience did too thank you special thank you especially to yoshi akita from japan former rocket tune eagles interpreter strength coach and international scout 15 years doing that went to the university of iowa also hey listen folks thanks to yoshi thanks to brian crocker producer with the lineup media group And thank you to everyone in the U.S. and around the world for supporting the show. Thanks again. Don't forget, go subscribe to the show. We got some great ones. And remember, stay healthy. And you know how to do that. There's a lot of ways to do it. Drink a lot of water, exercise, take your vitamins, you know, watch what you eat, sleep, do a lot of great stuff because that's your health is your number one thing. And then after that, be safe. God bless you. And we'll see you on the next show.